Right. Thanks everybody for showing up. It's much appreciated. And I hope you won't be disappointed. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, read out from the first part of the collection, which uh, is uh, in fact inspired by Edward Steichen's uh, Family of Man exhibition, which I found so overwhelming that I felt I had to write about it. I have been working on this poem since the mid-90s, and um, have reworked it, have re-edited over and over again, the uh, first version of it was published um, by Black Farm Press already, but this is slightly edited and there's been things added to it. So here we go. The family of man unifies continents. Timeless the lands on a monument to behold. The arms of the unborn reach out to grasp nothing. Where chaos is unquestioned, we are yet to be. The umbilical cord modifies the matrix. When it swings, lines are drawn. Man starts wearing a mask. Woman proudly expecting the promise of motherhood. In labor, in agony, released. A masked man delivers terrible wonders. Breastfeeding the present future, eyes purified in love eternal. Soothed in the mother's embrace, sound asleep in the hunter's cradling bag. Bosomed in its own blood and bone, the child rests peacefully. So that is about the whole cycle of so pregnancy and, and, and giving birth and all which pictures of which you can see again in the, um, in the collection. Vows of holy communion, sacred rituals of faith, the promise of freedom. The Piat Piper and his strutting army of childish believers. The goodbye kiss of the sweetheart the wedding procession entrenched, prayers mumbled over folded hands, angelically clad, the virgin child. The black and the white in celebrations unite, gobs ajar, screaming at the silver screen, hesitant smiles drawn in, widely banding, individual mass, the modern mess, fractured in their togetherness. Man tearing canyons into mountain ridges, toiling, shifting heavy loads, disemboweled earth. Woman scrubbing floors and clothes, bruised hands and naughty tongues by the innocent river bank. Man building the fire of life and death, Benign as the wrath of the gods, megatons in atomic nightmares. A dust cloud is a dust cloud, is what our stories are about. So again, that is a bit sort of starting off with the, the ritualistic element of our society, the religious elements, and then of course moving on to the destructive elements of the 20th century, that, which is again, illustrated so perfectly in the exhibition. The distorted mask of man belly garrant, child pole in hand, hitting hard to hurt, guiding his mother into a helpless dance. That man in uniform in a chapel bush rests, its ancient silence a fitting melody. Hello, Rain. <laughs> Haggard eyes seeking a cuddle across the barbed wire fence, hoping for man's soul to heal. In a timeless ritual to shift souls, black and white mourners paving one man's final lap, howling mute sorrow wiped out before tomorrow. 
the final three bits. The mischief in childhood eyes, testing the span of their freedom, trading tales of heroic fantasies, stealing secret kisses in the park, giants jumping desert dunes, carefree adolescents straddling adulthood. Snapshot of lovers embarked on an infinite yes in metropolitan bliss. Sharp shafts of light piercing the lightness of a swing in motion. Secluded in the here and now, devoid of destruction, frozen still. A child laughs happily. And the last bit is dedicated to the visitors, especially a very good friend of mine who came visiting. I showed him the exhibition and um, sort of him having seen and coming out with it, so with his eyes red, impressed me so much. Monochrome glimpses, testimony to the fragile creature, discharging red-eyed visitors, silently seeking within themselves the strength to walk away. Not raining anymore, is it? Okay, um, second part is going to be from the second part from the book also, which is called Pirates and Slaves. Um, it's partly a little more political than the rest of it, um, but it also looks at um, the struggle that as a poet sometimes you face when you have to look back at your life and trying to get into it again and finding the new rhythm and finding new things to write about. So, startling start. Sudden sorrows seize the sorry soul, seeking stiff surrender with silent sticks. The ticking time tends the toughest turns, thorough tweaks throughout the tumult. You usurp yourself beyond all your yesterdays. Yeasty years yell in yellow unison. Reconciled with the secret stored inside, no knowing what that former self would ever have to say to its descendant. The hurt he has wrought upon souls closest to his heart, thorns in his picture book still. Adorned with scars and open wounds, badges of guilt he won't unpin. They make no hero of the bearer, nor do they deprive or despair him. Life does not deal in such delusion. Choice is a luxury the beat beggar doesn't dare to dwell upon. In decisive days the darts sting. Deliberate confusion dispatching dark clouds. Do not turn down the truth or shy away. The climb is steep, but death is always a good start. Thank you. The title poem, Pirates and Slaves, shorter one, again, it's one that I wrote ages ago, in another lifetime, really. So, Pirates and Slaves. Commodify yourself. Your words never echo your thoughts. Let the drums roll and drown yourself in pretense. You resent the world around you, denying what denies you. Pirates and slaves, you know, Pirates and slaves. <laughs> it's a little critique of, of, of our society, basically. The next one is called The Raft of the Medusa, which is, of course, the painting and the Louvre. Um, however, uh, for me, it's also kind of dedication to. Uh, the drama and, and the hardships that refugees nowadays very often have to go through to join the heaven of Europe. The Raft of the Medusa. 
Wild is the storm that propels the heart, batters the raft and its rotten wreck of the crew, swaying blindly on the swell of the surf across the vast, unforgiving ocean of despair. At night, the haunted crew adrift, wrestling with the shadows of its own wraiths, each speck a specter of past promises broken, sensing a pain as black as the night. With the velocity of a spinning nightmare, the creature breathes the winds of decay, a collective combusting calamity. The faint-hearted fodder for the feeding fish. Sighs and sorrows, feeble prayers lost upon the salty seas. The sour stench, the soul a stinking mess of sickness, sailing sullenly, seeking solace, sabotaged. I think that the I try it's three work verse mostly that I write, but I like working with sounds, and I hope you appreciate or manage to get the S sound, which for me is the wind, sound of the wind when you're on the, on the ocean, really. Um, the last one for this part, it's called The Creature. Um, you watch a lot of horrors um, on TV these days, you see people demonstrating everywhere. Anger seems to be dominating, uh, so this is a dedication to just the creature that we are. I have spent youngs studying the creature, nebulous and vast, have cursed the ignorant day as I have the infamous night that seemed to alter the being in shameless delight. I wrestled its shadows in bitter brawls, letting it spit its venom without blinking, pushing up my shades, flicking my roly, not giving an inch of the square foot I have stood on in worse storms yet. These studies test backbones. From eyes of love and utter despair, out of silent mouths locked in awe, on sunken shoulders and heads, under raised chins and softly smiling lips, in clenched fists and broken bones, a million stories and one. This being, pure as the destruction it wreaks upon all and itself, forever seeking to perpetuate its own daily demise, I embrace its heavenly complexity as you would a fragile child, simple as eternal love. I spell peace in colorful letters, scribbled over walls of war, hum serene serenades into bleeding ears, stitch together what is torn, just to imagine what good could be born if we took care of the broken. Right, third and final part of the, of the collection um, is called uh, Songs of a Traveling Mind. And it's mostly about the journeys I've had with my son, taking us to Wales, Hillfall campsite, where we've had some wonderful moments, to Scotland also, um, Corsica, it's taken us all over the place. Um, songs, the idea of songs is of course also again taken in the epi epigraph, um, do I contradict myself? Very well, then I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. It's a quote from uh, Walt Whitman's Songs of Myself. Um, I saw uh, a documentary about Bob Dylan and he said that nowadays no one writes, I contain multitudes. And since it's already been written, I thought I'd just steal it from him. <laughs> the ideas of songs, of course, plays also an important role. Um, because on our travels, of course, music has been a constant companion, as you can imagine. So the first one is called The Seagull Song. The seagull spreads its mighty wings. It cannot help but fly and steal. Together with the updrift winds, it sings 
of wounds and ways to heal. The next one is called Destination Sana Beach. It's one of our journeys. We went to Sana Beach, which is an island on the west coast of Scotland. Um, it's a terrible story with this. <laughs> We've been driving down the road on this island, and um, it's been it was raining. It was purring cats and dogs, as they say. And we were so fed up with it, thinking we'd never make it to the beach. Plus, we were really low on petrol, no no petrol station anywhere. So we stopped by this little what is pen breakfast place, <laughs> and uh, knocked on the door. Door was open. Nobody answered it. Nobody in the garden. We went inside. <laughs> The iron, the, iron, the iron board was on, everything, TV was on, nobody answered our calls. And it looked just like something straight out of a Hitchcock movie. <laughs> and Owen, he was about, I don't think he was about five then. And he said, uh, oh, let's go upstairs and have a look. And I said, no, let's go out. <laughs> I don't want to find any dead bodies here, man. <laughs> so destination, Sana Beach. Edging around blind turns, we count on the absence of oncoming traffic, not to call our bluff. Low on petrol with no station on the cards, that's but our faith and each other's company to go by. We reach Kilshow and through variations of green yet unseen, reflected in both our eyes, the bay rests in the cradling arms of the coast, time suspended. Against all odds, the clouds surrender. A change of clothes to suit the spirit. We set, we set out to discover what we've come to explore. Past the lighthouse, over the hills, flocks of sheep undisturbed. Where the ever-shrinking road evaporates, we carry on undiminished towards the Moby Dick beach. The father, the sun, and the opening sky. Our tiny existences measured by the ancient rocks of black, his playfulness and a wink of the bluest sea tear my soul apart each time I almost think I'm safe. <laughs> Do I have time for three more? Two, three. So this next one is called Hillfort Rituals. Hillfort, as I said, is the campsite uh, that we started going to about, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Started off with a teepee campsite. Nowadays it's more yurts and bell tents, but at first it was teepees. And the owner, John, the manager, John, is just the most crazy person we've ever come across on our travels, I suppose. Hillfort Rituals. The itinerant cowboy and the little boy, dancing round like sparks upon the windswept farmlands in the campfire light, teepee set against the open sky, broken clouds below the full moon, Diablo figures tricking gravity, inventing impossible swings, minute eternities untangled playing buffalo and arrow games and almost believing it. Bonds of experience shared. Indelibly reduced to nothing but ourselves, guessing the stars, partaking in the soul of Hillfort Rock and the solitary banshee's cry, lost in space that second later. Beyond these boundaries, brambles and heather, Next one, Freedom Bars is, of course, I don't know how many references you can spot. Um, it's called Dedication to the Beat Poets. Um, there's Bob Dylan in it, all sorts of stuff. So, Freedom Bars. In my house of beat syllables, the good folks dance to funky tunes. Big smiles on happy faces everywhere. Kinky substances, our faithful companions. No laws. No laws broken. In my castle of paper, there's only thieves. 
Cool eight acid tests and they glow painted leaves. Ring the gigantic bell of liberty. Soon I shall go there once more, infinitely broke but healed. And would you join me, I pray, on the merry trickster bus? Never shall we leave that place or look for better fields to dwell. It is there our freedom will unfold. So pack your sleeping bags and logs to keep us warm, for the horizon's begging, anchored in our hearts. Spread the word, put signs up in your window. Two is company, three is a crowd. And finally, um, again, some t somehow my collection seemed to mark the end of an era, like Exploration in Sea was dedication mainly to my university years, which I tried to write to keep a track of, otherwise I tend to forget things. So this one is sort of uh, dedicated to our travels also, which come to an end because he's 18 and he wants to go with mates now, no longer with his father. <laughs> so traveling soul. I sing the ties of our pilgrimage, infinitely shared since time immemorial. The spiritual ecstasy of our travels, a sanctuary of sanity. The roads we've rattled down, falling for the beauty of the stars, growing giants and nurturing dragons, illuminating the darkness in each other's heart. No silent tears or bitter words shall be forgotten each part of the deal, nor the bliss of conversing souls until the moon dubbed us brothers, restored in true companionship. Fatherhood stripped of authority, communion of equal minds at various stages of experience. I sing the blessed bonds of the soul that lingers on the fringes of the night. Thank you. Um, I was really nervous, so I, I forgot the most amazing person, so Anne-Marie. <laughs> Thank you very much. You cannot, you cannot imagine how much work she puts into Black Fountain Press. She's a brilliant person and a hard worker. And um, this little book would never have come into existence without her. Um, so thanks again for all the opportunities you've been giving me. And I just can encourage you, if it's not for the book itself, buy it for the yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming.